coming up on the Knowledge Industry Podcast. I was actually proud that I knew nothing about this business. And two years later, I had my first $1 million day. That was $1 million of sales within 24 hours. I remember clearly, weirdly, feeling a bit embarrassed. And I was like thinking, why am I embarrassed about this? Do you sell online courses or run live workshops? Do you have expertise that can help people in life or business? Are you even running an online training empire from your kitchen table? Then you're part of the knowledge industry, a fast growing industry that means that you can learn almost anything and anyone can create a business around what's between their ears. Welcome to the Knowledge Industry Podcast with your host, Mark Egan. Hello and welcome. I'm really pleased you're here. Let me just briefly introduce myself. My name is Mark Egan. I used to work for the BBC, worked in broadcasting. And then when COVID-19 struck, my business of training people in workshops and going and filming, creating social media content for brands, that was all completely wiped out overnight. I had a computer, a camera and the internet, and I had to start effectively a brand new business. There were a few scary moments, but I managed to pull it off and now basically run a business from my spare bedroom. And what I realized is pretty much everybody has something of value to teach. And that's why we're seeing the growth of what I call the knowledge industry. Throughout your life now, you'll constantly have to learn new things, pivot, change directions, and online courses and workshops allow you to do that. Now, today's guest is Chris Farrell, and he went from being a radio presenter in the broadcasting industry to a very successful online educator. How did he do it? And what can you and I learn from it? So I'm joined by Chris Farrell. Chris, how are you doing? Where are you in the world? Mark, it's such a treat to be invited here. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm very excited to be your guest here. Uh, I am currently in the Forest of Dean in Gloucestershire, of all places. I just relocated from Los Angeles and uh, I'm here in the West Country and loving it. Do you know the Forest of Dean at all? I don't, but I'm sure you'll invite me over after this. But um, more, but more that's I, the reason I asked. The reason I asked Chris is because whenever I speak to you, it's like, oh, I'm in Mallorca now. Oh, I'm in Los Angeles. <laughs> um, you know, that's that seems to be your life. But let's let's take you back to the when you were in the real world um, <laughs> before you got into the whole knowledge industry. Um, right. You worked on radio. You you know, like me, you're in the broadcast yes. industry. So tell me a bit about what you used to do and how you've ended up moving across into kind of online education. OK, well, um, I guess everything kind of started like, you know, m maybe most of the listeners here of the knowledge industry with with um, passions and interests that we had when we were kids. I remember as being a kid, I loved storytellers. I loved my English teacher at school. He was always a great orator. He would always engage pupils in his class with how we would recount tales or even poetry, I seem to recall. So obviously at a very young age, I kind of had that thing seeded about good communicators. And I remember being about I remember clearly I was 11 years old. I remember hearing um, a local radio station in Essex where I grew up. And I remember thinking, hang on, you can earn a living by talking. This sounds like the best job ever. So at a very young age, I kind of had that seed sown that if you can communicate well, obviously didn't think of it as analytically as this as a kid, but if you could communicate well, you could earn a living. And so kind of longish story short, I kind of decided that radio was the career for me. And um, I just enjoyed people that were, were entertaining and engaging and would invoke curiosity when you listen to them on air. And um, like a lot of people in, in any industry, really, you kind of you learn your trade uh, kind of, if you like, uh, away from, let's call it, the spotlight for want of a better word and I did this for four or five years at various radio stations around the country I then got um asked by Heart which is the and, and still is the biggest radio actually now it's the biggest radio network in the UK to come to London to do their mid-morning show and so I then presented the mid-morning show in London for about 20 years uh only re oh, I say recently gosh it was 15 years ago or so uh leaving to go and live in America and and totally like you've done Mark in your career and I suspect many listeners of the knowledge industry have either done in their career or are thinking about doing right now and if so we love the fact that you are here I, I completely pivoted and moved away from broadcasting into the into the online world so that's kind of where the, oh, and what um, was the, the what was the reason for that I mean because you know you've you got a successful career um, you know you're doing the mid-morning show on heart you know playing lighthouse family Robbie Williams whatever you were doing um, you know, was it was it because you moved location that you kind of decided to reinvent yourself? I've there's two reasons really. 
first one is maybe a little bit more practical, and that is I moved to America. I just got married, moved to America, and um, I didn't know anybody, anything about America, so I had to start to earn a living. In fact, I remember clearly thinking, I've got six months' savings, and after that, I'm at zero. So it's like I need to come up with something. I need to kind of start something and, and make something work. I also had always enjoyed people that tried new things. I heard a stat the other day, Mark, that said that one in two people are going to be doing a different job in two years from now. I think it's very prevalent at the moment with everything that's going on in the world. You know, we are in an industry, we are in an environment where we can take what we know and, and completely pivot and completely maneuver like you've done into a completely different line of work. So I, I'd always in, admired people um, that had done this, entrepreneurs, I guess, the Richard Bransons of the world that had taken something new and gone off at a different trajectory. Uh, plus, I had a practical thing of thinking, well, I've only got six months worth of savings before I run out of money. So uh, it was then that I started looking, I guess like a lot of your listeners have done, just looking at this whole online thing. And back then, this is 2006, 2005, you know, the web was relatively new. It was still, it's funny to think that this was even time, even buying stuff online. Do you remember that feeling? It was like you were a little bit nervous about clicking the buy button. Of course, now we do it with... Yeah, you thought you may maybe never see that money again, you know? <laughs> exactly. You think, am I really going to get this? Of course, obviously, that's now totally changed. So I was kind of in that spot of thinking, well, I, I, I'm intrigued at this whole online thing. I know that money can be made. I don't quite understand it. In fact, I knew, I, I've often talked about the fact, and this really is not an exaggeration. I could use Google. I could use Word. I could search the internet. And that was it. I knew nothing about online marketing, creating a product, making money, creating content, getting it out there, building a tribe, engaging with your tribe. Uh, building a list, um, monetizing, all that sort of good stuff. So I actually had that luxury, if you like, of ignorance of starting from ground zero, but understanding that this web was a game changer. It's the new industrial revolution. So I just really threw myself. I've always been pretty good at learning. I've always been quite, it doesn't really phase me. In fact, I get quite excited about it. So I thought, I'm just going to immerse myself in this business. And if we think about it, think about anything. If you and I now were having a conversation about, I don't know, learning how to speak Spanish or how to play the guitar or how to code, uh, we would know that that is a skill that we would have to learn. And the irony is that having an online business, a, a successful online business, is exactly the same. All it is is a skill that therefore, by the very definition of what a skill is, can be learned. And so that kind of gave me quite a bit of confidence, thinking this is something that I can learn. So I just need to sit down and do some due diligence to learn. And I remember getting up at four o'clock in the morning, and hustling and learning about building a website and uh, getting people to visit the websites, then getting people to opt in and then engaging with those people that have opted in. Uh, ironically, again, now things are s a thousand times easier. You can build websites within a few, you know, within 10 minutes, really, with some great services that are out there. But that's kind of where but, I started. But, but, but there must have been some moments there, though, um, because a lot of people have tried, you know, to put up an online course and yeah, there must be moments where we think, actually, my money's running out. I'm not actually sure this is going to work. Yeah. Well, for some reason, I organically understood the importance of having a tribe. In other words, the importance of having some people that you can communicate with. And if you think about any successful business, they already have people. Like, I mean, Apple's obviously, you know, the, the creme de la creme. But anytime they release anything, they already have a tribe of people that they can tweet, they can email, they can, they can communicate to about what this thing is that they're about to do. That makes it a thousand times easier than trying to find, continually find new customers all the time. So I worked really hard, Mark, on the first six months of actually not worrying too much about making money, but instead of wanting to build a list of people that I could engage with. It kind of comes back, I guess, to my English lessons when I was a kid. You never get that second chance to make a first impression. My teacher in English classes was engaging to us pupils. So I thought, if I can create a relationship with people, if people can sign up to my list and think, I kind of like this English guy. He kind of just sounds like a, a, the guy next door. He's not trying to sell something straight away. Again, as I've just said, we never get that second chance to make that first impression. So I saw a real opportunity just to kind of be myself online, build a list of people. And there's a saying that if you're good to your list, in other words, if you communicate with them, if you maybe share some things that you are learning in an easy to understand manner, we can come on to the simplicity of doing this in a few moments time. But when the time comes, well, let me back up. If you're good to your list, when the time comes for you to recommend a product or service to your list, they will be good back to you. So I really 
understood, as indeed in any relationship, in any friendship, that it's give and take, isn't it? You listen, you you speak, you communicate. And so I, I was I understood the importance of creating a tribe of people that I could communicate with, that I could engage with, and when the time came when I had something to present to them, um, would offer to them. I, I think oh, but I, I, I the think that you I was going to say the thing that you're you're offering to them. Presumably, you were kind of figuring stuff out, mastering it, and then being able to teach other people to do the same thing. Was that kind of how That's you got started? Exactly what it was. That's exactly exactly to the nail what it was. I would spend. I get up for a few mornings, at four o'clock in the morning. Spend a few mornings learning something, and anything doesn't take that long to learn if you if you really focus. And I was focused on learning it. I think, okay, oh, okay, I'll do it a few times. All oh, right, I get it now. I'll do it a few more times. Okay, I've sort of get it. Do it a few more times. Right. I sort of understand this now. And then you're right. Then I would teach it. They say the best way to understand something is to teach it. And it's absolutely true because that's another thing. And you're very good at this. It's one thing to know something. And I'm sure many listening right now to the knowledge industry might be thinking the same, but it's one thing to know something, but it's a completely different thing to be able to explain that thing in an easy to understand and an engaging manner. And I don't know whether it's being English, I don't know whether it's that I'm certainly not the quickest person. I, I personally, when I learn something, I need to have it broken down. I need to be explained step by step. Here's what we're doing. Step one, step two, step three. Most people, by the way, don't do that. They're, they're too quick. They use terms that they assume people understand. And I, I'm, I've always been very confident to say, look, hey, I don't understand what you mean. I need this to be ex explained this to me like I'm a five year old. That's how I need to understand stuff. And I'm, I have no shame or embarrassment admitting that. And so when I had stuff broken down and when I really understood it, only then could I articulate it back to other people in an easy to understand manner. And that kind of became, ironically, my kind of, if you like, unique selling point, the fact that I would break down seemingly complex things and explain them in an easy to understand manner and just doing that. And do you think that, do you think that, do you think, do you think that came though from your broadcast background? You know, were, were, were there things that you were taking from your past that actually think, weirdly enough, this really applies to online education? It's it's so I love the fact you've asked that, because at first I didn't even think about the radio thing and the presenting and online. I thought there were two, you know, here I'm OK, I've done radio, I loved it. I'm now doing something completely different. But the more I got into this online world, the more I realized there's so many parallels between the two. And it all comes down to one thing. It all, any success comes down to one thing, and it's the ability to be able to communicate something simply, be able to communicate something effectively. Yes, there's tactics, there's webinars, there's automated things, but that's all kind of you know tactical stuff that you can hang on on top of all of this. Well, let's break it down to brass tacks. You know, we're all busy these days. Listeners, right now, to this podcast, you might be in your car, you might be in your kitchen, you might be on your treadmill, but we, we've one thing we never have enough of is, is time. Everybody's busy. So we have to re, we have to be conscious of that. And we have to communicate things succinctly. And to answer your question, Mark, I think that the reason that the broadcasting helped effectively, particularly when you're doing, <coughs> excuse me, entertainment is often you are told, you know, you have Chris, you've got four minutes until the news is at 10 is at next, or you've got a guest and you've got time for one more question. So you have to get good at brevity. And there's an interesting thing about the online world, because anybody really now can do something online. Most people are unaware of being concise with their language. Most people, let's talk, let's talk about podcasting, doing what you're doing. Most people think that they can, they can interview somebody, but most people can't because most people don't listen. There's a lot of sub subliminal things going on. They're wanting to ask a smart question so they sound smart for the listeners and they're not really listening to what somebody's saying and engaging and reacting. No danger of that with me, don't worry. No smart questions, you'll be fine. <laughs> I guess it all comes down to talking to people rather than, than at people. And so on the radio, this is, sorry, this is a bit of a long-winded way of answering a question, but you asked, you know, did the radio help the online? Absolutely, because I learned how to communicate effectively and simplify things. And I, I find that most people would like to learn like that. Most it's easy to feel, isn't it? As if everybody else, have you ever felt this? Everybody else has got it dialed in, and I'm sort of like, I feel a bit embarrassed. I don't really understand it. I know, as I'm sure you do, but most of the like the names, if you like, in the online world, you know, they're all buddies of mine. I've hung out with loads of them at Thanksgiving and parties at the houses and done events around the world. And 
everybody's the same. They're bumbling through. They're not really sure about certain things. As I remember a huge, huge breakthrough moment was one of, I probably shouldn't mention who he is, so I won't, but a name that everybody will know. Uh, and we were having a conversation. And I thought to be successful in the online world, as in any, any business, you had to have every component of that dialed in, you know, um, traffic, email marketing, um, pay-per-click advertising, all these various components, webinars, and all of these are separate, you know, huge things on their own. And this guy said to me, he said, I don't know anything about that. And I was like, wait, what? He has not got the first idea. And that to me was such kind of, it was almost gave me permission to think, you know, imperfect action. We don't have to nail everything. I love that book, Ready, Fire, Aim. You know, in, particularly when it comes to the knowledge industry. If you've got a bit of knowledge about something, and we talk about this in a few moments' time, let's just get something out there quickly. Let's make it perfect later. Take imperfect action, uh, because that really is the key. I know it sounds a bit cliche, but that really is the key to having success. And, and most um, people... I mean, you are... took... Sorry, sorry to interrupt you there, but, but you, you kind of, um, you know, I mean, that's how you got started. You were, you know, learning things, putting it out there, and taking imperfect action, like you were saying, you know, putting yes. stuff out there, what worked, what didn't work. Yeah. What was the point? Like if, you know, just to get across to people how you went from kind of nothing to success. What was the point where you thought, actually, you know, I think I've cracked this sort of online education uh, thing. You know, what was the moment where you thought, yeah, I figured this out? That's a brilliant question. There were probably two. And um, I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to use financial successes because that's uh, that's obviously not everything, but of course it's hugely important. And it's, of, it's also quite easy to to, you know, you can see a tangible number in a bank account, let's say. So it's quite easy, therefore, to see something. And one of them was, uh, I started in line on 2008. And as I say, I was, I was actually proud that I knew nothing about this business. And two years later, I had my first $1 million day. That was $1 million of sales within 24 hours. Creating a product, selling it, and well, it actually made 3.2 million over over the week. But within that week, there was a, a 24 hour period of one million dollars in sales. And when I achieved that after two years of starting, that was clearly one of those moments where I was thinking, gosh. But here's the thing with that, Mark, even that, if if we kind of like put it under the microscope and actually kind of look tactically at how that was achievable, that is essentially exactly what we are talking about. And all I did all in inverted commas was built a list of people engaged with that list over a few months without selling them anything, getting them to know, like, and trust me, and and then started to, to seed this thing that I was releasing in the summer, it's all about affiliate marketing, um, that was gonna be $2,000. And $1 million in sales is only 500 people buying. Now, if you've built a list of uh, 10,000 or so, which is relatively easy to do within a few months, and you only need to make 500 of those or only convert 500 of those into, into sales. Suddenly, my, my point here is, I don't want this to sound like something that's absolutely inconceivable. A million dollars in 24 hours, there's no way I could do anything like that. Well, let's just, let's zoom out a little bit. If you are building a list, and if you are engaging with that, and if you can convert 500 out of, you know, 10,000, what's that? Is that a 5% conversion? I think it is, which is easily doable. Suddenly, these numbers become achievable. But the only reason any of that could have happened is is because I was doing what you're very good at, which is this communication, which is allowing people to know, like, and trust me in the first place. So that that one million dollar day was, I mean, it changed everything for me. It not only financially made a difference, but it kind of really put me on the map. Then I was asked to speak at events and stuff like that. But the, the second thing was I also had um, a membership site back in the day. And I used the same kind of business model. And the membership site was only, was it 27 or 37? I think it, it started off at 27, but yeah, sorry. It was $37 a month to join my membership site. And the reason I did it at quite a low price point was because, again, the numbers, you only need 27 paying customers paying you $37 a month to make $1,000 extra a month. And for me, that was mind-blowing. I was like thinking, hang on, 27 people essentially equals $1,000 a month. Now, I, I always like to very quickly clarify, we will obviously never want to judge i never judge anybody just as a you know a credit card number which a lot of people do these are real people with hopes and dreams and fears and aspirations just like all of us but if we remember that and then back to what really you know is your and i passion if we communicate that effectively then suddenly the numbers become quite 
quite scary because if you can get 27 people buying f f something that's $37 every month, then the next month it's, it's you know, it's, it's double that. It's 54. Suddenly that's, you know, obviously 2,000. Then it becomes compounding. So now you've got this residual income, this recurring income, which is a great business model. So this thing that I did where I had a million dollars a day, that was a, that was a launch. And obviously that was good. But I, I've never, but I don't believe launches are a business. I think they're more of a bonus. You know, it's not something you can do every day. So it's a nice little kind of maybe once or twice a year. I mean, it's still obviously very nice once or twice a year. Uh, but as a business, you need to have something that's a little bit more, got a little bit more legs and a little bit more stable, like a solid, sturdy table. And that's by having something like, in my case, like a membership site that's a low price point, low barrier to entry, where I can be in there every day engaging and creating new stuff and sharing and maybe spending half an hour in a Facebook group answering questions, allowing people to know, like, and trust you. Um, so th that's essentially, to answer your question, they, they were the kind of the two things that made me think, gosh, there's something in this whole online thing. I, I have to say, you know, that 27 by 37 thing, um, because, you know, like, you know, my story um, with COVID, um, my business of, you know, video production and yes. going and delivering training and speaking all over the world just wiped out immediately. Um, and actually, you know, I was able to pivot completely to online. And I got quite a few sort of messages from people a little bit baffled by, you know, some of the things I'd said or posted. But again, it's it, because it can scale. You don't need lots and lots of people to buy an online course for it to be a useful income. And right now with a lot of people struggling, you know, I think a lot of people don't have that awareness that actually you would not need to have a huge audience, um, have a very expensive course to actually make something that would pay your rent or your mortgage for the month. And, you know, when you had those, you know, million dollar days, I love the way you just throw it in there. You know, you know, I had the million dollar day because, you know, you know how it is. Um, oh, gosh, I hope I didn't you must sound had, like that. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. I'm I know you are. You, you, you must are. have had people who, um, you know, even I know some of the things I've put out, like marketing videos, um, people from my past industry sort of send me direct messages like, well, oh, what the hell's happened to you? Um, oh, because yes. it's almost like yeah. a different world, you know, kind of, you know, from broadcasting and it's like you've defected or something, um, yes. you know, that you must have had like that little niggling thing in your head of people thinking, you know, this kind of making money online thing, it's all some kind of sleazy, weird industry. Yes. Did you get any kind of negative feedback from your previous life? <sighs> I love that question. I remember clearly, weirdly, feeling a bit embarrassed. And I was like thinking, why am I embarrassed about this? What is, what is triggering the fact that I'm kind of creating this whole new thing and I, I'm a little bit embarrassed about it? And I, I don't know whether that was more, um, I don't know whether it was more, honestly, kind of a Catholic upbringing and like kind of a issues with, you know, with, with money, really. And kind of needing to to allow my my mindset about money to to slightly change, but I certainly did at first. But but the way I got around it was, I mean, I was always good at this anyway. But I was own I would only ever talk about anything that I had actually done myself. And if I promoted other products, which wasn't that rare, but I did do it now and again. I had this thing where I would only ever promote anything if either a I knew the person that created the product or b i actually used it myself so i kind of said to myself and again i'm not just saying this to say the right thing but i kind of said to myself i'm only going to talk about anything or teach anything or share anything that i genuinely could look somebody in the eyes if i was having a coffee and and talk about and say yeah that that's great that that's good and that kind of made me feel like well i kind of believe in what i'm doing i do enjoy it and so that kind of allowed me to to sort of overcome that those feelings but yes I did have those at first and I think anybody does I think there's a slight element of thinking people are going to kind of you know laugh at me if I fail or they're going to think what's what's Chris trying to do but that's why doing anything new I, I've always believed that the number one uh, skill that all of us need to embrace is, is courage and when it comes to starting up a, a new business you know we all suffer from we've all got issues whether it's like imposter syndrome or anxiety or depression or um, stuff that nobody really wants to talk about these days, particularly in the online world, particularly in the social media world. You know, our, our lives are literally filtered, not just metaphorically, but literally filtered as well. So I think there's this real kind of gaping hole at the moment just for vulnerability and, and realness and saying, hey, you know, I'm kind of struggling a little bit here, if you like, but I'm going to do this thing all the same. And people very, very quickly 
I look at people like, I don't know, David Goggins, I've just read his book, and Russell Brand even is a very good example of this, and Jordan Peterson, they all talk about this, this vulnerability, how everybody is going through something. And so therefore, if I think if we kind of acknowledge that. People are very smart these days. People are very savvy. We all know those kind of slick marketers where we just don't get a good feeling when we, we listen to them. Those days are kind of over. The knowledge industry these days is about sharing something that you know about, sharing your vulnerabilities, letting people get to know you a little bit, share a little bit about your story. Wasn't it Anthony Robbins that once said, uh, said a core fundamental drive of all of us is to belong to something. It doesn't matter if it's a scout group or a football team or a, a yoga club. We all want to feel like we belong to something. And so therefore my point is if online we can very quickly do this, people can very quickly feel as if they belong to your tribe. That's how we start to create relationships. And you, obviously... You're, jump, you're, you're, you're jumping ahead of my next question here, which is... <laughs> um, Coming up on the Knowledge Industry Podcast. How am I now, at the end of the day, uh, incrementally a little bit better than I was this morning when it comes to growing my business. If you can't answer that, you've wasted your day. So we want to get into a habit every day of thinking, right, this is baby steps. This is imperfect action. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, comments or suggestions, join the Knowledge Industry Group on Facebook. If you want to learn more about using video to educate, connect and build rapport with your audience, go to markeganvideo.com. If somebody's listening to this and they're thinking, like, wow, okay, never mind million dollar days. I, I quite like that 27 by 37 thing. You know, I, yeah, that could really, absolutely. that could make my life a hell of a lot easier. Um, sure. And we all know that this industry is growing and growing and growing and growing. You know, if there's anything COVID has taught us, it's that we constantly need mm. to learn new things and be flexible and, you know, life is changing. And these kind of micro niche courses are often our, our bridge from getting through a problem or learning something quickly, we need to learn, no, even if it's, you know, immediately, how do we use Zoom? How do you make a presentation on Zoom? Oh, there's a little course for that somewhere. Um, so if somebody's now convinced, they're thinking, you know, actually, I really, you know, I know stuff. I've, whether it's been a parent or yoga or journalism, something that they think, actually, I want to teach this, but I, I, I want it to be sustainable. That's why it's called Knowledge Industry, this podcast is because it's one thing having the knowledge, another thing being able to teach it, and another thing actually being able to make it sustainable financially. What would be your advice going from, you know, broadcast industry into the point where you're able to travel the world, live where you want? You know, if you've got a laptop, you have a business. Mm -hmm. What would be your advice to somebody who's at the very beginning of this journey? It seems kind of overwhelming. What would you say? I would say two things. Firstly, and most importantly, is that you do not have to be an expert. You do not have to be perfect. We all feel as if, if we'd love to do something like this, but uh, who's going to listen to me? I don't really know enough. You know, I'm not, I'm not that great an orator. I'm not that great a communicator. I remember once speaking to, um, I remember her name as well. Natalie was her name, and she said to me, she said, Chris, um, who would care about me? I'm a mum. I'm, I'm divorced. I've got three kids. Who would, who would even care about my story? And I said, the very fact that you are a mum you are divorced, you've got three kids, suddenly makes you hugely relatable to a huge contingent of society. So you don't have to be perfect to get started. You don't have to feel that you're an expert in a particular subject matter. You have to know something, just a small amount. And if you don't, it, and I'd like to talk about this in a few minutes as well, a lot of people are thinking, why? Well, I don't actually know what I would do. And that's often not talked about. So let's come back to that, because I, I think that's a very important thing to illustrate and, and communicate if someone's listening right now thinking, I'd love to have an online income, I'd love to earn a few thousand extra a month, but I don't even know, I don't even know what I'd teach about. So we'll come back to that. But my two uh, takeaways from your question, Mark, are you don't have to be perfect. I'm oh, sorry, I've forgotten your question now. <laughs> you said- I was just um, saying, so, so somebody beginning, and I, I know you hinted at building a tribe, but yeah, if yeah. somebody feels kind of overwhelmed, where you know, what would you do? You've, okay. you know, you're sitting down. You, you've got you. You're in the coffee coffee shop. They said, "Look, yes, Chris, can I pick your brains? What would you yep. say?" I would say the most important thing you can do is get good at having daily habits, and by that I mean, and this I I have this I have it in front of me all the time. I think of my daily log here where I track habits and routines and things that I do every day. And I'm trying to think that the easiest way to explain this, my answer would be every day you want to go to bed that day and ask yourself honestly, 
what you now know that you didn't know when you woke up this morning incremental growth you know how can you be i think jordan peterson talks about this funnily enough how can you be it sounds a little bit cliched but it is true that's why cliche is a cliche because they're based in truth how how am i now at the end of the day uh, incrementally a little bit better than i was this morning when it comes to growing my business if you can't answer that you've wasted your day so we want to get into a habit every day of thinking right this is baby steps this is imperfect action i'm going to incrementally grow even if it's 0.1 percent every day and i'm going to do something i'm going to chip away at learning this whole knowledge industry as you said mark there's there's now tools out there things like kajabi for example that allow you to have everything in one place where you can essentially make money by selling information so that would be a great place to start once we get comfortable by thinking okay i'm going to have incremental growth i'm going to make baby steps every day what am i therefore going to make incremental growth on what am i going to make baby steps on maybe let's say learning something such as let's say kajabi learning an online tool that gives you a real tangible actionable focused thing you're thinking great for the next two weeks i'm going to learn this thing and then every day when you go to bed thinking what did i actually learn today actually today i learned actually how simple it is just to create a very simple one page website and how i can use their templates and how I can populate them with my own content. I feel really good about that. I didn't even know that 24 hours ago. And that's just going to compound. The next day you're going to be excited. And and that excitement and that growth, I, I know you've experienced that, I've experienced that. It's quite incredible how intoxicating and how captivating that is. And it kind of keeps pushing you forward. But I would say you, we need to be, you know, discipline is the key to success. Again, it sounds a little bit contrived, but it's true. We need to be disciplined. And we need to genuinely say to ourselves, and this is why I have this thing called a daily log, as I keep mentioning. Every day, at the end of every day, I write down what was I write my three victories of the day. If we, if, we, if we can't answer these questions, then we're really faking ourselves out. This is something that we'd like to do, but we can't really be bothered, and we'll have a coffee, and we will just, you know, we'll look at Facebook for a few minutes, or we'll scroll through Instagram. No, look, don't waste time. Epictetus, one of my favourite uh, kind of um, gurus if you want he was a stoic 2000 years ago he said when are you going to stop to procrastinate you're no longer a child and yet you waste time when you're going to realize what you can become and it's all through just taking daily small focused action um, we've heard it a thousand times but most people don't do it and that's because we let our mind rule our day that's up that's a challenge so in a sense, it's, it's having a kind of um, a structure, a plan. Um, you know, if you don't schedule things, things don't happen. And also assessing, looking back and thinking, what did I learn? So when you're trying to figure out what I could teach other people, you can actually look back and say, this is the journey I've been on. Oh, I learned that or I learned to do this. or And that can give you ideas for things that you can help other people with. Now, I'm going to hold you to because you said to remind you, um, <laughs> somebody listening to this and they're like, oh, yeah, that's all right. But, you know, I don't have any particular certificate that says I can do anything or you know maybe I've raised children but you know that's not something I can teach is it what, what how do people figure out what kind of things they could teach well firstly the biggest seller online is information so as, as you alluded to earlier you you can people will buy information about anything so information is the biggest seller online so don't think that there's going to be nobody wanting to buy what it is. Just look at lynda.com and um, Udemy and uh, l people having independent courses. But if you're thinking, which I did as well, um, I, I, you know, who's going to want to learn from me? I, I don't really know anything about anything in particular. A really good way to frame what you could possibly create a course about or get into the knowledge industry about is, is ask yourself, what have you struggled with yourself in your life? What is it that you have had to overcome? What have you found that has been a hurdle or a setback or a challenge or an obstacle or something that you've actually had a, had a challenge with? Because if you can really identify that, and we've all got stuff like that, we've all got stuff like that. If you can look at yourself thinking, yeah, I kind of, I was battling with that or procrastination or limiting beliefs or, or, or whatever, that is a huge clue about what you should be doing. You should be helping people that have gone through exactly what it is that you've gone through because your truth, when you talk about that, is just going to shine through. You're going to find it effortless to communicate about that subject matter because you're really speaking from a deep vulnerability place of having been there yourself. And that is what we talked about earlier, Mark. That is what's going to connect people to you. So if you're listening right now and you're thinking, I'd love to have an online business. I don't really know what to talk about. Ask yourself, what have you battled with? What have you overcome in your life? What challenges have you gone, gone through? 
that is the exact thing that you should be exploring, creating a course about or helping others because that is your purpose if you are unaware what your purpose could be. When I finally understood that, it was like, wow, that makes so much sense. And ironically, through helping others, you end up helping yourself as well. Yeah, because I think it's what people often don't understand is the range of things people are making courses on that could be absolutely micro. You know, it could be, um, you know, you're buying a property in Spain. You know, here's some kind of advice because we just did it uh, three months ago um, to parenting, to yep. uh, marketing, to, you know, all sorts of things. So getting close to the end here, um, just one of your thoughts on, um, you know, right now people can do like you and I do. Um, you've got an internet connection, a laptop and a webcam. You have a business now, potentially, uh, using <laughs> yes. the knowledge yeah. between your ears. Um, where do you, like, you know, as, in big picture style, where, how big do you think this industry is going to become? And if somebody is thinking, okay, how do I make sure I kind of ride that wave? What would you say? I'd say we've only just really started, which is an incredibly exciting place to be. I feel that uh, more people, as we talked about earlier, more people are more comfortable than ever before with paying for stuff online. More people are obviously accessing stuff through, the, through their mobiles as well. Um, this is going to be one of those industries that if you, if you don't get involved, you are just going to get left behind. So you clearly just listen to this podcast. There's, a, there's something deep inside you. There's a little spark. There's something that's kind of been triggered. And you, you kind of know. And I remember this. I started online in 2000. And was it six or eight? I always forget now. It's so long ago. I think it was 2008 but anyway but for like what well, i don't i don't think i've even mentioned this to you mark what i haven't mentioned often not through intentionally is that i thought about this for 10 years i remember clearly like in the early 2000s thinking about the online thing and taking you know eight ten years before i actually executed and, and kind of pulled the trigger so to answer your question anybody that's just thinking about it, now there's never been a better time it reminds me of that saying you know when is the best time to plant a tree the best time is 30 years ago when is the second time, best time to plant a tree? It's right now. We all know how quickly time goes. I would advise you, if you're interested in looking at having a little thing online that can eventually earn you a nice little residual income, uh, just start to get comfortable with thinking, OK, I just need to commit to a bit of time. It might just be half an hour a day where even if I get up earlier, I'm just going to study and I'm going to learn and I'm going to educate myself uh, because our learning equals our earning. So if we do what we've always done, we're going to get what we've always got. Most people want their life to change, particularly financially, but they don't do anything differently. Well, we all know that quote from Einstein about insanity. Obviously, if we want to do something, if we want to make a change, clearly we need to do something that's that's different to what we're doing right now. That very thing that you could do that's a little bit different could be from tomorrow thinking, do you know what? I'm going to stop blooming procrastinating and I am actually going to take action on this. It's been sitting inside me for a while. I know there's something here. I'm going to look at that that website that Mark spoke about. I'm going to follow Mark or, or me online and just start that journey of identifying how the knowledge industry is something that I can be part of and just get good at committing to this for half an hour every day. Rearrange your schedule. Get up earlier before the kids. Immerse yourself in learning something about this industry every day. Do what I do. Keep a daily log. Write down what you learn every day. Just within a few weeks, you'll find, gosh, I didn't even know this two weeks ago. And now I feel yeah. more confident to really explore this business even further. You know, I, I, I always listen back to the podcast after the recording and try and pick out like a nice quote to put at the beginning. And I think just in that last minute, I could go to about could take about 54 very quotable sentences. So, so thanks for that. That's oh, a, made my editing much more difficult. Um, <laughs> now, obviously, just to finish up, you're at the point now where, like I said, you, you've you got the time to work from anywhere. You're following other passions. You know, you're writing comedy scripts. You're, you know, yeah. pursuing all sorts of things, you know, helping young people get, you know, better financial education. Um, I mean, just very briefly, sort of where, where are you at now and what are you uh, working on at the moment? I appreciate you asking that. I'm really at the point now where I'm just wanting to be so um, so conscious of what I spend my time doing. I don't want to. There's a beautiful book called The Five Regrets of the Dying. Have you have you read that book or heard of that book? No, no. It's a lovely, cheerful title, isn't it? <laughs> but it's, well, it's, it's the one the with, like, with nurses who work in hospices yes, or something like. That. Exactly. Yes, yes. I do remember yes. this now. Actually, yeah. Is it? So essentially, it's about um, this nurse called Bronnie Ware, 
and she looked after people that were um, dying, well, palliative care essentially. But anyway, the, the point is, she worked with hundreds or work, yeah, with hundreds of people that were literally going to be dying, and they kind of at their deathbed, and the, the weeks beforehand would share like their number one, all their regrets. And she wrote a blog post about it that became so popular it got turned into a book. And the kind of the number one regret, and we kind of all know this kind of intuitively, was the number one regret was I just regret having not done something earlier in my life really because of fear. And I think if we're smart, just even if you're listening to this podcast right now, we can learn from people like this. We can circumnavigate 30, 40 years and say, look, we, we've all got fear. We all think we're not good enough. We all don't like how we look. We've all got insecurities. We've all got issues. And what doesn't help is the social media world, we feel as if nobody else has these challenges, but we're the only ones, and therefore they, we keep them buried even more. But, you know, we're all going through something. Everybody's going through something. We're all flawed. We're all human. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine. So to answer your question, what I, what I now want to do is I, I don't want to waste time. I don't want to not do stuff because of fear. Uh, again, fears. Uh, Jim Carrey talks about fear. He gives this great talk all about fear. He said fear is always going to play a part of your life. A lot of people think they want to get rid of fear. You're always going to have fear, and that's okay. The the key is to kind of continually live and, and manage it, and kind of just kind of keep it at bay, and and almost embrace stuff that would make you a little bit fearful. Whether it's making videos or podcasts or online courses, it's easy to say, "Oh, I can't do that." Do we really want to be that person for our kids? Do we really want to be that person that thinks, "Oh, I'm too scared to do it, so I'm not going to do it." Do we really want to be like Bronnie Ware says in the book, one of those people on their deathbed that regrets having not done something because of fear? So to answer your question, I'm kind of now at the stage now where I'm exploring other things like writing comedy. And, uh, I teach kids how to be financially smart as well. And these things I'm genuinely really passionate and excited about. Um, I don't really want to waste time anymore <laughs> with people, with things. Um, you and I are working on a, on a fun project as well. Uh, I don't know if yeah. we're going to talk about that. Maybe we'll talk about that down the road. But um, that excites me hugely as well. So I'm kind of just like wanting to do three or four things that I'm really genuinely excited about. So that's kind of where my head is at right now. You know, listening to you speak, you know, great communicator, great storyteller. You know, you could actually have a great career in radio if you think about it. Just leave that thought with you. You think? Um, yeah, you could, you could pull it off. That's um, so good. Okay, I'm going to explore that. Thank you. Now, as you can hear, I mean... Chris obviously is well read and has achieved a lot. Uh, so I'm sure if somebody's listening to this, will think, well, actually, I want to find out more about this Chris Farrell chap. Um, any particular oh. place they should head to? Well, um, I have a little free gift I've written called, um, so it's something I wrote, it's called Reinvent. And it's, it's kind of a similar to what we're talking about. And it's about, I'm a huge believer that we've all got chapters or areas of our life that we kind of like to, like to reinvent and whether it's you know get better financially or health or spiritually or emotionally or business-wise or relationships or, or contribution or, or whatever so i've written a little thing about um how to reinvent and uh it's a free gift and if you go to uh, project reinvent yourself.com bit of a long name admittedly forward slash mark um i'd love to offer you this gift for free so that's project reinvent yourself.com forward slash mark and uh, it's only take you a 30 minute read, but it's a, it's a great little read. And uh, a quick little story for you. I actually wrote the book for myself, funnily enough, because for years of studying personal development, which I've been doing since I was 20, um, I've got so many books and binders and stuff all over the place. I thought I wanted to have one place where the bits that really resonate with me the most, that really impacted me and helped me in my life, are all in one place. So if I want to dip into it, if I'm feeling a bit down or a bit lost any time, I can kind of dip into this, my, if you like, my ultimate cheat sheet for life, and everything is in one place. So I kind of wrote Reinvent for myself and then gave it to a few friends and uh, had, had wonderful feedback. So um, thinking of kind of putting it out there. So anyway, that's the reason behind it. But projectreinventyourself.com forward slash mark, and that would be the best, best place for us to to hang out and stay in touch. You know, when you said it um, only 30 minutes, I thought you were going to talk about that's how long it would take, take to type the URL, uh, but you mean actually read it. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty catchy. I got to hand it to you. You really uh, mastered this online marketing mal malarkey. <laughs> oh, no, it's hilarious. <laughs> but see, look, if somebody like Chris has, has completely incompetent URLs, can exactly. make it. What was that URL again, exactly. Chris? Yeah, exactly. Reinvent just yourself. Thinking. Project reinvent yourself. That sounds a bit, yeah. Maybe I need to, maybe I need to. Dot com that. forward slash mark. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, first of all, thanks for sharing your sort of 
uh, your story, your expertise, your knowledge. And I think, like I said, there's certain things that will stand out for different people. Some people will be like, wow, a million dollar day, that's amazing. Other people might be more attracted by the fact that, you know, up against the wall, you found a way to kind of make a living. Other people might be attracted by the idea that, yeah, I've got something to share. Why am I not sharing it? This could be really useful to other people. But I think um, all in all, the message is that you have knowledge that has value and that can allow you to be sort of financially better off, give you more freedom to do other things and maybe just actually you know, pivot towards something that is more aligned to actually what you enjoy doing rather than maybe what your normal work or job is. So some great learnings in there. Um, thanks as always, Chris. And thanks, you know, maybe Marky. at some point in the, the sort of not too distant future, we'll have you back on and maybe go deeper on some of these things because I've got a whole kind of ream of questions that I would love to ask, love ask you, love but to. Um, yeah. just to kind of respect your time, but I'll maybe get you back on another time. But um, thanks love very to. much, Chris. And um, yeah, thanks, I look forward buddy. to a meeting with you when all these lockdowns finish i can't wait thanks thank you mark thanks everyone for checking out this episode of the knowledge industry appreciate your time speak to you soon mark don't forget to join the knowledge industry group on facebook if you've enjoyed this podcast please leave us a good review and if you want to connect head to markeganvideo.com.